Welcome, Accounting Boffins. You with Ashraf Patel and the crew. What's today's topic? Yes, fixed assets. Now, remember, you've dealt with fixed assets already. So what we're going to be doing is a bit of revision. And then we're going to go into a section that many of our learners feel I must stay away from. But after you're done with this lesson with Ashraf Patel, you're going to master the section on assets. Let's look at this. Have you ever thought about this? That what assets uh, does a business need to operate? Depending on the type of business, they would need different assets. Okay? So if you're, if you're looking at assets, one of the most important assets any business would need, obviously, would be land and buildings. But depending on the specific need of that enterprise, they would need specific assets. More about that just now. So if we look at assets, and if we look at our mind map, or we look at an overview, what are we dealing with? Remember assets? You get non-current assets, right? And then in your different types of assets, you have a tangible asset, right? You have non-tangible assets, okay? Now, obviously, when it comes to an asset, a business, a, the business acquires an asset in order to use it. So it's not, the, the asset is not bought with the intention of reselling it. However, it would become necessary for the business to sell the asset at some stage. And therefore, you now have to do what we call asset disposal, and yes, the famous depreciation. Now, all of these are terms that you are okay with, but as we go along, you will see exactly how we're going to be using them and what we're going to be doing with all these terms. Okay, so now, if we look at the definition of an asset, what is an asset? An asset is something that the business owns and can sell for cash. So obviously it is a possession of the business and it is something that has value and therefore it can be sold, right? So by definition, an asset has value. What are the types of assets that you have? You have non-current assets. What are those? This is an asset whose value will not change in the next 12 months. In other words, the asset remains constant for a period of 12 months, and therefore, it will fall within the category we, what which we call non-current assets, right? Now, obviously, the terms are used interchangeably, so sometimes you'll hear me talking about fixed assets, sometimes you'll hear me talking about tangible assets. It's one and the same thing. Now, when we say tangible assets, what are we referring to? Assets that can be touched and physically seen. Obviously, when you're talking about a tangible asset or a fixed asset, you're talking of something that you can touch, something that you can feel, something that you can see, right? What examples of that would be land and buildings, obviously, equipment, furniture, and vehicles. However, you also get non-tangible assets, right? And here we're referring to assets that you can't touch. For example, patent rights, goodwill. Mention that this, this business has a goodwill attached to it. It's not something that you can see. It's not something that you can physically touch. But yes, it is an asset, but it's an intangible asset. All right, non-tangible asset. Examples of this would be trade names, for example, Nike, Coca-Cola, etc. Right, now, remember, all that we're saying is that think of your non-tangible assets as well. However, for the needs of our curriculum, you would not be expected to, to know how to deal with your non-tangible assets. A lifespan of an asset, if you take your personal assets, surely you can see that that asset has a lifespan. In other words, a computer has a physical life of three to five years. Did you know that? That it, is, it may last longer, yes, but generally it is expected to have a lifespan of between three and five years. 
obviously, if you look at property, then definitely we're looking at an indefinite lifespan because obviously you're upgrading property unless by some uh, disaster or natural disaster, the property gets destroyed. But generally, the property is regarded as having an indefinite lifespan. The period of time that the business is expected to use a depreciable asset. Remember, we're talking about the useful life of the asset. So if we're looking at that laptop and we said, okay, we're going to use it for three years. That means that the useful life of that asset for your business would be three years. This means, therefore, that within a space of three years, you are expected to use that asset. So it has a lifespan of three years. Obviously, the asset after that period, it's no more usable. It, can, it now becomes redundant. Redundant means it is no longer, it may still be working, but in terms of the policy of the company, it is now regarded as a redundant asset, meaning it is no longer usable and it should be dispensed of, we should get rid of it. Okay, because obviously we're not going to use it anymore. What happens now? Now comes the next step where we have to replace that particular asset. The cost of replacing an asset to buy a new asset, which, has a, which obviously you're replacing one asset with another asset. If, you, if you're getting rid of one laptop, it's now time to replace it with another laptop. This may be used to value your tangible assets. In other words, what we're saying is your replacement cost will give you an idea now of what it would cost you to replace the existing asset that has reached the end of its useful life. Now we come to a very important term in accounting, and this is depreciation. Again, Nothing new to you, we've dealt with it, we're just revising these terms. Assets decrease in value over time. We've discussed it, as you're using an asset, it is decreasing in value. The decline in the market value of the assets is generally from wear and tear, obsolescence due to technological advancements. This decline in the value is called depreciation. Very simple. Take your personal asset, your laptop that you have at home. Initially, when you bought it, you may have paid 20 or 25,000 rand for it. However, after one year, is it still valued at 25,000 rand? And the answer is an emphatic no. Why? Because you've used it for one year, it has depreciated in value, and that value that you have used is called the depreciation. Depreciation is what we refer to as an imputed expense, a very, very important word. What do we mean by an imputed expense? Allow me to explain. If you take a normal expense, like salaries and wages, Obviously, you can see that when you pay your salaries and your wages, it has an impact on your bank account. Why? There's money, physically money, coming out of your bank account into the hands of your employee. However, when you are depreciating your asset, the question that you need to ask yourself is that, is that expense going to impact on my bank account? Definitely not. This means, therefore, the depreciation is what we refer to as an imputed expense because we allocate the part of the cost to a specific accounting period. Clearly, you can see the amount of depreciation that you've rented off in this financial year is the expense allocated to that financial year. Obviously, there will be an expense to the next financial year until the asset reaches the end of its useful life. So once again, depreciation is an imputed expense. Now we look at accumulated depreciation. What do we mean by accumulated depreciation? 
A very simple example, a very simple example. Let's take an asset with a value of 30,000 Rand, okay? Which we are expected to use for three years, right? So if you take 30,000 and you divide it by three, it will give you an amount of 10,000 Rand. That means each year, you're going to depreciate that asset by 10,000 Rand, okay? So, in the first year, if you wrote of 10,000, and in the second year, you wrote of the second 10,000, clearly you can see that your accumulated depreciation at the end of year two is now 20,000 Rand. Why? 10,000 in year one, 10,000 in year two. So your accumulated depreciation is the cumulative depreciation, the collective depreciation, right? It's that part of the asset that you have used up, up to and including the point at which you are working. Therefore, we come to now to a term called the carrying value or the book value. So your original cost price less the depreciation that has accumulated over the period in which the asset has been in the business. In other words, look at this here. It is your cost price minus your accumulated depreciation, which will give you your carrying value or your book value. Can you see that? So the term carrying value means what is the real value of that asset? It's the cost price minus the accumulated depreciation to give you the carrying value or the book value. The terms are used interchangeably. The residual amount, the full amount of the asset cannot be written off as long as it is in the business's possession. The carrying value is kept at one rand. Right, a very important aspect, and we will deal with it in detail later on in our lesson, where we say we don't write off the asset to zero. And the reason we don't do that is if, there, if you say an asset has a value of zero rands, it actually means that it has no value. Then by definition, it does not comply with our IFRS, uh, uh, it does not comply with our IFRS uh, definition that says an asset must have a value attached to it. So yes, although it has reached the end of its useful life, it will never be ever, the, the, the cost minus the accumulated depreciation will never be zero. We'll always have a residual value of one rand. So now, what we're saying is that the total cost less the residual value will be the depreciable amount. Okay, now, when you're calculating depreciation, the two methods that you use to calculate depreciation, one will be what we call the cost price method. Here, you work with the cost price. You'll notice that it is fixed. You'll also know another name for it is the fixed installment method. Another name for it is the straight line method. What is important for you to know at this stage here? that in all of this year, you work with the cost price in order to determine your depreciation. Got that? So if any of these methods are mentioned, you work with the cost price. If you're working with the asset in terms of its useful life, what you do is you say at a fixed rate over five years at 20% per annum, obviously 20% if you multiply it by five, we'll give you 100%. At the end of five years, the asset would now reach its residual value. The other method of depreciation is where we use the diminishing balance method. Now this one here, notice the important part is the carrying value. It means you calculate your depreciation on the carrying value. So it's called the diminishing balance method, the reducing balance method, the carrying value, the book value, or even the declining method. Basically what it means is that every year your depreciation will diminish. So what you have seen here is that when you're writing it off, notice that your depreciation will work out as a certain percentage every year. 
the, write, the writing of depreciation takes a longer period, and this method is regarded by SARS as the norm. Which method? The diminishing balance method. Okay, finally, if we look at our asset register, an asset register should contain the following, the description of the asset, the serial number, the date of purchase, supplier's details, and obviously the purchase price. So all the information regarding that particular asset is kept in your asset register. The asset register should contain the following information, the depreciation, your method, the amount of depreciation, your accumulated, obviously the value, and the expected residual value. So all the information regarding that particular asset is kept in your fixed asset register. Now remember something else, your, your fixed assets account is the cumulative total of all your assets, but the register will be kept for each individual asset. Okay guys, that's it for this segment. Let's take a quick breather and when you come back, we'll carry on with discussion on fixed assets. See you just now. Welcome back, accounting boffins. Yes, you with Ashraf Patel, and we are dealing with tangible or fixed assets. Once again, a quick recap. When dealing with fixed assets, what are you expected to know? You are expected to know your method of depreciation that you are using. Remember from our previous segment, we said the cost price method, we, we write off our depreciation on the cost, then we look at the other method, the, de the diminishing balance method, there we worked out our depreciation on the carrying value. So both these are important for examination purposes. Remember also that when you're dealing with assets, understand that the assets are important, they're integral part of any business because the assets are used to generate returns. Okay, now let it, let's look at this information that we have here. It says here that in the books on the 1st of March 2020, you've got equipment at 200,000, accumulated depreciation is 30,000, right? We bought new equipment for 48,000 on the 1st of November. This was not recorded. Very, very, very important, right? Remember what I always say, RTFQ, read the Full question. Right, so if you had equipment to the value of 200,000, right, and you bought new equipment for 48,000 on the 1st of November 2020, let us now do our calculations. Firstly, it says there, calculate the depreciation on the 28th of February 2021 at 10% per annum on the diminishing balance method. Right, so what do, you, what do you need from this question? What information is important for you to be able to calculate the depreciation correctly? Number one is the rate of depreciation, which is 10% per annum, and the method of depreciation, which is your diminishing balance method. Got that? Great. So obviously, what's the first thing we're going to do? Because we're writing of depreciation, on the diminishing balance method, I have to take my cost price of 200,000 Rand, subtract my accumulated depreciation of 30,000 Rand to give me a book value of 270,000 Rand. Now watch what I'm doing. The reason I'm doing this is because my method of depreciation is on the diminishing balance method. And that immediately rings an alarm bell to say, remember, on the carrying value. Therefore, how do I determine my carrying value? By taking my cost price, subtracting my accumulated depreciation, and that will give me my book value or my carrying value. Please get used to these terms. They're used interchangeably, either called book value or carrying value. Right, okay. 
Now, I've ascertained and calculated my book value, so what do I do next? Now I say, I use what we call art. Art, in accounting, drawing, as Ashraf lost his marbles or something. No, listen to this year. Look at the acronym. A R T, right? Have I got the order right? Let me just redo that for you quickly. A R T. Now I've got it right. Okay, what I'm talking about. Firstly, A is the amount on which you are calculating your depreciation, right? R is the rate of depreciation. And the third component, a very, very important component, please, I'm appealing to you guys to use that component, and I'll show you why just now. T, the time factor. So in this case here, the, the equipment that we had for the entire year, we used it for 12 months, therefore put it, although 12 over 12 we all know is equal to one, and anything you multiply by one will not change. However, you are not sure if you're always going to use 12 over 12, depending on when the asset was purchased or disposed of, as you will see in our next calculation. So in this particular uh, calculation, it's my 270,000 times 10% times 12 over 12, which will give me a figure of 27,000 red, okay? Obviously, we're not going to use our calculator for that because it's a straightforward uh, calculation. Now. If you look at your next calculation, remember, you had purchased new equipment, there we go, on the 1st of November 2020, right? So if you count now, November, December, January, and February, that means the new equipment we used was only used for four months, right? Now you can see how important it is to use our art once again. Notice, there's the amount, 48,000 Rand. Now, the question you may be asking is, why are we using the cost price? It's actually 48,000 Rand minus zero. It's new equipment. It was only purchased this year. It has no accumulated depreciation. Therefore, 48,000 minus the zero, obviously it's 48,000, times your rate, which is 10 over 100, times 4 over 12. And if you do this calculation, you're going to get a figure of 1,600. So your total depreciation now on this particular uh, asset that we are, uh, assets that we are calculating it, using the diminishing balance method, you find that your depreciation works out to a total of 28,600. So what is fundamental? in this particular cal calculation of yours, is to realize that you separate your old from your new. And the reason you are separating is because of the time. As you can see, that was used for one year, this was used for four months of the year. Okay. When accumulated depreciation exceeds the cost of an asset, then the carrying value must be one red. Right. Remember I alluded to this earlier on? Now I'm doing an explanation. Please make sure you follow me through this explanation because it is important. If you have the cost of an asset at 100,000, the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year was 98,000. Right. In other words, at the beginning of the financial year, the asset had a cost price of 100,000 and an accumulated of 98,000. Clearly you can see that the carrying value at the beginning of the year is 2,000 Rand. How did we do that? Cost price minus the accumulated depreciation obviously is my carrying value at the beginning of the year. There we go. There's my carrying value. Okay, now, they tell you depreciation for the current year amounts to 5,000 Rand. Okay? You're not expected to do the calculation. They're telling you that the current year's depreciation is 5,000 Rand. Okay, let's do that. If I take my 98,000, which is my accumulated, 
plus my current year's depreciation of 5,000, I find that I now have an accumulated of 103,000. Obviously, the 98,000 plus the 5,000. Now look at this year. The carrying value will now be the cost price is 100,000, doesn't change, minus your accumulated of 103. You know where that came from? It was your accumulated at the beginning of the year plus the current year's depreciation. Well, you can clearly see that you got 100,000 minus 103,000. It's a minus 3,000. It cannot be a negative. You cannot say the asset is worth minus 3,000 grand. All right. Okay. Now, generally, this happens with an asset that is old. It has reached the end of its useful life. And very important, very important in terms of your calculations. In this case here, the current depreciation was given to you. But if you are asked to calculate it, remember, it will apply when you're using the cost price method of calculating your depreciation. So therefore, now, we're saying that the annual depreciation must be reduced so that the carrying value will be one rand. Therefore, the depreciation for the year will be reduced to, remember what we said? Let's do this so you can see it. The cost price was 100,000 minus your accumulated of 98,000 rand, giving you a carrying value, therefore, a carrying value of 2,000 rand. Now, the maximum depreciation that you can write off is the 2,000 Rand minus the 1 Rand because you want to be left with a carrying value of 1 Rand. Clearly, you can see the maximum depreciation that you, that you can write off there is 1,999 Rand. Okay, therefore, if you add now 98,000 plus the 1,999 Rand will give you a, a total value of 99,999 Rand. Okay, there we go. The total accumulated depreciation will therefore be shown as 98,000 plus the 1,999 Rand. Here's that figure I told you about, 99,999 Rand. Okay, watch, cost is 100,000, Accumulated is 99,999 Rand, therefore giving me the carrying value of 1 Rand. Okay, now let's look at this, how it will relate to your note 3 of your balance sheet. Please guys, note 3 to your balance sheet is of extreme importance, so you must understand the note. So let's look at it. Here's note number 3. There's my cost price at the top, 100,000 Rand, beginning of the year. Accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year was a 98,000 Rand given to you, correct? Giving you a carrying value at the beginning of the year of 2,000 Rand. Then, so in other words, whenever you're dealing with note number three, you start off with the balances at the beginning of the year at the top of note number three. Right, so then you now bring in your movements. Well, how did the assets change during the year? Number one, were there any additions at cost? No, they were not, right? They, no, no, no mention was made of a new asset that was purchased. Number two, was there any disposals at carrying value? Now, this is critical here. It will always be disposals at carrying value, right? In this case, none, not applicable. Now you bring in your depreciation for the year, right? Remember, we did the calculation and we showed you that the maximum depreciation that you can write off is 1,999 Rand. Therefore, giving you a carrying value at the end of the year of 1 Rand. Now do this. Watch. You got 100,000 minus 98,000 will give you 2,000. 2,000 minus 1,999 Rand gives you a carrying value of, so if I'm working downwards, I end up with a carrying value of one Rand. Let's check. And that's the beauty of note number three. You can always do a check 
to see whether your note 3 actually works out or not. Look at this here. Your cost price at the end of the year hasn't changed, is 100,000, right? Because we're only dealing with the one asset. What's my accumulated depreciation at the end of the year? Remember, it is your beginning of the year balance, the 98,000. Let's just change this here so we can clearly see it. It is your 98,000 at the beginning of the year plus this year's depreciation. Can you see that? So beginning of the year, 98,000 plus this year's depreciation of 1,999 Rand will give you an accumulated of 99,999 Rand. Now, let's do the check. 1,000, sorry, not 1,000, 100,000 is my cost price, less my accumulated depreciation of 99,999 Rand will give me a carrying value of 1 Rand. This means, therefore, you can see that your note number 3, you can actually do a check to see whether you get the 1 Rand starting from the top, working to the 1 Rand, and also working upwards in terms of taking the cost price at the end of the year, subtracting your accumulated depreciation at the end of the year, and that will also give you a figure of 1 Rand. So now, can I take for granted that you fully comprehend why we use the carrying value of 1 Rand and how we go about doing the calculation? Most important to remember here is that it works with the cost price method, and generally an indication will be given to you or you should be able to realize from the question that is an old asset use, uh, coming to the end of its useful life. Okay, guys, I think we've done a lot in this segment here. Let's take a quick breather, and when we come back, we'll continue with calculations with regards to our assets, fixed assets. See you just now. Welcome back, Accounting Boffins. Remember, we're dealing with assets. What did we say? Quick summary. When dealing with your assets, what do we take into consideration? The methods of depreciation, the two methods that we've dealt with is the cost price method and the diminishing balance method. The cost price method has other names attached to it, fixed installment, straight line method. All of them, you work with the cost price. Right, then the other method of depreciation, diminishing balance, reducing balance, all of them, you work with the carrying value. So clearly you can see the two different ways of calculating your depreciation. Right, okay, now I want you to, let's go through this in terms of um, the analysis of depreciation. So when you're saying account debited, you debiting depreciation, why? Because it's an imputed expense, a debit to depreciation. You credit accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Why are we crediting accumulated? Because accumulated depreciation is what we refer to as a negative asset. What do we mean by that? By a negative asset we mean it's that part of the asset that you have used up to date. Okay. In terms of my classification, obviously there's the amount, 3,600, watch. A negative asset reduces the value of your asset. Therefore, accumulated depreciation will result in assets decreasing by 3,600, and your depreciation will result in your owner's equity decreasing by 3,600. Your liabilities remain unchanged. Okay, so now, watch. What are we saying? We're saying that depreciation is an expense. What type of an expense? An imputed expense, therefore debited. And you're crediting accumulated depreciation. The reason why you're crediting it, because it is a negative asset, right? 
allow me to explain a negative asset one more time to you. A negative asset means every asset has two components. Original cost, which was 100,000, is the cost price. To date, accumulated depreciation, 60,000, that's a that's the part of the asset that you've utilized already. So that's a negative asset. What's its carrying value? Cost price minus accumulated will give you carrying value. Okay, now the question says here, explain your classification for accumulated depreciation. What, do we, what, what have we been talking about? Here we go. A negative asset shows a reduction in the value of an asset. For example, let's do it by, way, by ways of an example. Here's my cost price, 100,000. My accumulated depreciation is 60,000. Clearly you can see that you have a carrying value of 40,000. Why? What did we do? We took the cost price minus the accumulated depreciation to give me a carrying value. So now, a negative asset shows a reduction in the value of your asset. There you can see cost minus accumulated. Therefore, I, I'm repeating what I said earlier on. An asset has two parts to it. Its cost price, its original cost and its accumulated depreciation, the total amount of depreciation that you have written off to date, therefore giving us the term negative asset. How does the diminishing balance method differ from the cost price method? Come, you should be screaming out the answer for this. Very simple. Your diminishing balance method, your depreciation is calculated on the carrying value or the book value, right? Whereas, and what is the carrying value? It is your cost price less your accumulated depreciation. You see that? So, what do we mean by the reducing balance method? We mean that you're taking your cost price minus your accumulated depreciation. Let's show it to you. Cost price minus accumulated depreciation is equal to my carrying value. So how does it differ from the cost price method? On the cost price method, you only calculate depreciation on the cost. You don't take into account the accumulated depreciation. What happens to the amount of depreciation each year when the diminishing balance method is used? Think about it. But before you think about it, let me give you another example. Just to set your mind at ease. Let me show you what we call, let's make this uh, five, 10, let's say year one, year two, year three, year four. Okay, now if we're saying that we're using the straight line method or the cost price method or the fixed installment method. In year one, you're writing off 10,000. In year two, you're writing off 10,000. In year three, you're writing off uh, 10,000. In year four, you're writing off 10,000. What graph do you get? Clearly, you can see a straight line. And definitely, Ashraf is not doing maths, we're doing accounting. But I want you to understand that the straight line method shows you that your depreciation is fixed every year. Right, now, what happens to the amount of depreciation when we are using the diminishing balance method? Watch. It is decreasing progressively. You'll notice, again, if we have to illustrate by means of a graph, if you started off there, the next one is going to go down, you're going to come down, 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 and in that way you're going to see it's going to be a diminishing balance. As the years go, the depreciation will decrease and therefore it's called the diminishing balance method. Will you, why will you not consider changing the methods from year to year? I mean, come on, this year we use cost price, next year we use uh, diminishing balance and then we revert back to cost price. Can we do that? The answer is no. 
the method remains consistent, reasonable, you must be able to com do a comparison. There must be a, a reasonable comparison from one year to the next year. Obviously, it's open to abuse. And if you want to just keep on changing it, then obviously that is not in line with international financial reporting standards. When it comes to internal controls, and this is very, very important, accounting controls a wide range of controls which will include, amongst others, double entry bookkeeping to, to ensure that we've made the double entries in terms of debit and credit, right? We look at budgetary control. Remember, remember in our previous lessons when we dealt with budgets, we said we're drawing up a budget as a forecasting tool. Now here also, the question you may be asking, what, how does a budget tie in with our assets? If you've done your budgeting correctly and you've noticed that one or two of your assets are, you, are coming to the end of their useful lives, it would now mean time to buy new assets. So obviously you need to budget for it. Periodic operating reports and statements, financial statements, cash flow statements, balance sheets, also called Remember the new terminology that we're using, your statement of financial position, statistical analysis, internal control. All of internal control means what? To safeguard the assets of a business. Got that? Again, internal control to safeguard the assets of a business. A sound internal control system should observe the following general principles, right? Now we're giving you general principles. Anything to dealing with internal control should take into account one, division of duties. We've explained this in many other sections of our work. And this is why it's important for you to see that internal control can be examined, can be asked for in different aspects of the work in accounting. So don't limit it to just one section of the work. With regards to assets, proper division of duties, meaning the person that's responsible for purchasing the assets cannot be the person that's responsible for ordering it. Yes, somebody, one person will order, somebody else will receive, somebody else will authorize. What are we doing? We're dividing the duties. Why? So the one serves as a check on the other to avoid fraud. Proper authorizing. You can't just nilly-willy decide we're going to buy a new asset worth two million rand. Obviously, it needs to be authorized. It needs to be uh, go through the process, the entire procurement process, which is so uh, currently we can see it happening in our country, that there has to be proper authorizing. So the person who finally signs off has to have the authority and must have done the checks and balances to ensure that we actually need that particular asset and obviously that we, we're procuring it at the best possible price. Documentation, very, very important. There has to be documentation for the asset in terms of the order copy, the final uh, uh, figure that, need, that will have to be paid for it, the invoice, etc., the terms, etc. Proper recording and follow up the purchase, the sale, the depreciation, and obviously the resale or, or, or the disposal of the asset, of the old asset if necessary. So you can see, guys, there has to be proper internal control processes in place. Fixed assets are part of the financial assets of the business and the business should keep proper records of all its fixed assets. Remember, we spoke about it earlier on. Let me mention it again. And what am I talking about here? I'm talking about the fixed assets register 
Okay, now, if you look at a ledger account, right, here we go, just a rough T account, and I'm telling you, you've got assets worth 20 million rand. Okay? Do you know, does the ledger account tell you what assets you have valued at 20 million rand? If this is your, for example, your vehicles account. Do you, where, where are you going to get the information regarding the 20 million rand worth of vehicles? In your fixed asset register. Every vehicle will have a register with all its information regarding that particular vehicle. In that way, we are able to control what? The records of that vehicle in terms of when was it purchased, what was the, who was the supplier, what was the purchase price, what's the method of depreciation, etc., etc., etc. So all the information regarding that vehicle will be in it. So like you have a register in school for your learners and your educators, by the same way, you will have a register of fixed assets, which will then be used as part of your internal control processes. It means if you're looking at an asset and you're saying, okay, this particular asset has reached the end of its useful life, how would you know that? You'd look at the fixed asset register, look at its original cost, look at its residual. Have we reached the one rand? Yes, we have. And that way, we will now be able to do the necessary. An effective system should include the owners must authorize all purchases and disposal of fixed assets and record them in the fixed assets register. Safeguard fixed assets against theft and losses. Very important. An effective system should include the following. Keep purchase orders, contracts, lease agreements in a safe place. Record any update of fixed assets in the assets register with regards to depreciation, acquisition, disposal of assets that need to be disposed of, right? So you can clearly see you're updating your records and all of this is part of internal control. Make sure that there's no theft, corruption, mismanagement, poor record keeping. Make sure that both, and, and obviously guys, this happens in both private and the public sector in South Africa. And not only in South Africa, but in the world over. You, 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 you find this in the media on a, on, on a continuous basis where there's, where there's a talk of corruption and uh, whatever else that goes with it. So yes, accounting is there to safeguard the assets of a business. With regards to ethics, it also to do with what is, we have to do what is right. And, 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 and stay away from what is wrong. It is a code of behavior that protects the rights of individuals. Do what is right. What are the char characteristics of ethics? Accountability, discipline, fairness, independence, respect, and responsibility. Think about your own life. In order to lead an ethical life, you need to have these characteristics in your life as well. So this applies to the accounting part of ethics as well. Remember what else? Transparency, integrity, confidentiality, and obviously operating standards of behavior. So taking all of this into consideration, guys, you can clearly see how all of this ties in with our topic, which is fixed assets. Right? So I think we've done quite a bit in today's lesson, and uh, I'm sure you, mo you, you are now very excited about assets because you, you understand it better. And also now, when it comes to asset disposal, I'm sure you'll be able to see why we're disposing of an asset. It will actually make sense to you why we do an asset disposal. Until the next time, guys, keep your feet on the ground. Keep on practicing your accounting because you want to be an accounting ace. Definitely, you are going to be an accounting star. Until the next time, be good.